Hi, this is Jason Palmozano, founder and CEO of Trinity Fitness, in the midst of a leadership series where I'm gonna take a different leadership topic and address it in five minutes or less. This uh, particular segment is called the delegating leader. And there's this thought, or can be this thought in leadership that if it's to be, it's up to me. That the buck stops with me and uh, I've got to get the job done. No one can do it like me. No one does it better than me. I want it done right or I want it done my way. Uh, all these thoughts. And so there's this, this dichotomy of how much do I do myself and how much do I delegate. And uh, uh, if you are of the mindset of the former of if it's to be, it's up to me and no one does it like me and I got to do it my uh, you can really run into some leadership issues. Uh, people around you, uh, they simply won't, they won't grow. They won't be stretched or challenged. Uh, you're going to be the bottleneck in the organization. Um, their uh, people around you will continue to feel inferior, and uh, they you won't bring people in close. There's a you foster lack of trust. All these things on. on. I know because that was the leader that I was for quite some time until I asked myself the question: What's the ultimate objective here? What am I trying to accomplish? And what's the end goal of that? Is it to have a successful event? Is it to, uh, is it to grow the organization in some way? Uh, is, is, it to, uh, is it for recognition? Or what is the end result? Or is the end result not just achieving something or accomplishing a task the way I want it to be done? is instead the ultimate objective to grow the people around me. And when I came to the conclusion that the ultimate and higher goal is to grow the people around me, the people that I'm leading, my thought process changed. I began to give away responsibility, give away the authority, uh, and allow people the freedom to think for themselves new and better ways of doing things, growing uh, the organization, achieving tasks, do it how you, and giving them the freedom to fail, succeed, and to come back. Now, if I'm a good leader, then I'm going to give them that freedom to fail without crucifying them for it. Every, uh, everything can be learned from. And that's the kind of culture that we want to try and foster as leaders. And so we look to Jesus as the leader. Mark chapter six, five minutes goes by really quick. So read at some point Mark chapter six, verses uh, oh, 35 through 44, and it's the feeding of the 5,000. And the disciples suggest to Jesus, it's getting late in the day, the sun is setting, turn these people loose so that they can get something to eat. And Jesus turns to the disciples and says, you give them something to eat. We see Jesus delegating. No, you give them something to eat. And as you read that, you'll see ways in which Jesus delegates. He delegates organization. He says, sit the people down in groups of hundreds and fifty. In other words, organize them. So he delegates organizational tasks. He, uh, he then... Uh, performs a miracle, multiplying loaves and fishes. And he gives those to the disciples to disperse. And so he delegates distribution. And then he says, hey, let's gather up what's left over. He, he delegates cleanup. Uh, all these things he's delegating. And as you read the Gospels and study Jesus, you'll see, especially earlier in, in Mark chapter 6, he calls 12 disciples to him and then sends them out two by two, giving them authority to go and do the ministry, uh, the objectives of the organization, let's say. Uh, and so as you read the Gospels, you'll see over and over again that Jesus delegates. He's not the bottleneck. He trusts others to do the tasks, to, do, to implement and live out the mission and the vision that they were on together and everyone succeeds. I hope that helps you be a delegating leader 
And uh, if you want more on leadership, check out our YouTube channel. God bless.